Ride. Series premiere Sunday, March 26th at 9. Only on Hallmark. Oh, it's been a dream come true. Um, you know, I've worked my whole life to have an opportunity like this and we worked really really hard filming it and we poured our hearts and souls into it so to finally see it come out and be well received is is just it's more than i could have ever hoped for it's amazing it is a multi-generational family drama um about these Three independent, resilient women who are bonded together by the love of this beautiful ranch that they all call home, and they they're trying to save it. It's 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 kind of on the rocks, and in the wake of a family tragedy, everyone sort of gets divided, but they find a way to come back together uh, through through their grief and their love for each other and their love for their home. It is a rodeo dynasty, um, but that's sort of the backdrop of the show. The The core of the show is is this family, is this hardworking family who, who, in, you know, when I look at them, I'm like, they're like everybody else in this world. They're, they're you know, struggling with grief. They're struggling with financial hardship. I know that the the climate right now is really difficult for a lot of people and and in our show we have these real people dealing with real problems and and they're doing so and they're moving through that by holding on to each other and I think that that message right now is really important today more than anything is like we're we're, we're living in such divisive times that you know, holding on to the people that you love and care about and, and looking out for your neighbor and and treating people how you would want to be treated is so important. I mentioned this earlier, but she really feels like this comfy sweater that I've always had just tucked in my closet and I and I pull her on and it's so easy to like fill her shoes mm -hmm. and play her. Uh, I, I find that I relate to her quite a bit. And and maybe that's because, you know, when you get to play a, such a mysterious character, um, you as the actor sort of get to fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. And one of my goals is I really wanted to show that she has a good heart, that she's a loyal, loving person. And yes, she makes mistakes and she makes choices that I personally wouldn't make, but um, I think we can all relate to the, to the idea that sometimes we make mistakes in life and mm -hmm. we can grow from those mistakes. And if we have loving, supportive people who are willing to forgive those mistakes and sort of guide us along like Isabel does for Valeria, then we get a second chance. And it's all about like what she does with those second chances. And ultimately, yeah, I, I, she was just this incredibly nuanced character that I, I got to pour myself into and it was it was really really special and I hope I get to continue to play her as I've been watching this the season I mean playing with the character playing with the other actors is one thing and then watching the work is another thing mm -hmm. and as I watch my co-stars shine on the show I'm like I'm I'm just in awe of their talent as well I think that the core of this series is the characters and what the actors bring to um, to the work here. Mm -hmm. Like the relationships between the McMurrays, the the writers who who wrote these really beautiful uh, relationships between everyone. I think that shines through, and I'm yeah. I mean, look, I'm I'm speechless. I'm just very happy to be, <laughs> be doing it. <laughs> The relationship between Val and Tuff is a, a really interesting and a really beautiful one, I think. Um, Jake and I, we talked a lot about how we were going to navigate this because, you know, the first few episodes, there's a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. And 
were kind of at each other a little bit. Val's trying more to like get in and break down Tuff's walls, but Tuff is very guarded, um, rightfully so, I think. <laughs> and um, but then but then he does this this really um, breach of, of privacy, and it really hurts Val. So Val and Tuff, we we imagined them as like twins almost. They grew up together. They're around the same age. They really were best friends. It, it was Val and Tuff and Missy and, you know, we imagined them like all getting into all kinds of stuff when they were kids. And, and so when Val left after Austin died, it shattered Tuff and he felt abandoned. And we see Tuff finally um, confronting Val and really he's the only one that like says it like it is and she kind of has no choice but to accept the fact that she hurt people and when he's being vulnerable with her she takes a moment to to be vulnerable with him mm -hmm. and let him in a little bit on on some of her secrets that she's been holding for so long um and and this is really challenging for val she's somebody who keeps everything very close to her chest she's a very guarded very closed off person and she's been that way because of the trauma that she's experienced in her life and so for her to open up to her best friend in my opinion is one of my favorite moments in the show and is a really beautiful moment of connection and forgiveness i think it marks a turning point for missy in the series it's it's a cathartic experience. I mean, she lost her husband. Not only did she lose her husband, but she's grappling with the idea that potentially there was this big betrayal in their marriage. And all of it is overwhelming. And, and all the while she's been at the McMurray Ranch trying to take care of all the McMurray boys. And, and in a previous episode, Val and, and Missy have that moment of connection where Val tells her, Hey, you don't always have to look after everybody. You should look after yourself too. Mm -hmm. And I think that moment when she's standing in the pen with the bull is her finally having that cathartic release that she needs to let go. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna see a new Missy. There were these two ginger cats that were working barn cats on the ranch that just sort of roamed around, but somehow found themselves always on set in opportune moments. So we're gonna to start to see more of these cats show up because they love the camera. They love the limelight. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, well, one that was played on me today, I don't know who it was, but I was going to, I keep all my scripts on an iPad Mm -hmm. And it's usually locked, so I have no idea how this person did it. Um, but I was, I was, I went to go do my scene, mm -hmm. and it was just me and Bo and Jake. Mm -hmm. So it's either Jake or Bo, and neither of them are confessing. Um, <laughs> but I go to do my my part in the scene, mm -hmm. and I come back, and I'm like going through my iPad to try and read my lines. And my home screen of my iPad has been changed. I usually just keep it a generic picture of like space. Mm -hmm. And my home screen has been changed to this very strange picture, like a painted picture of a carrot <laughs> holding a turnip baby crying. And it's like this weird sort of image, but it's like a hand painted image. And mm -hmm. I was like, who did? First of all, how did you get into the iPad? And second of all, who did this? <laughs> and no, everyone was just sort of snickering and nobody said anything. Um, I was mostly impressed by their uh, spy tactics. One thing that, it, that is really fun that happens on set is Bo's uh, plays guitar and he mm -hmm. often picks up songs while we're, while we're waiting in the wings. Um, but they'll be like, what we're doing right now. So he'll be strumming along, singing like, and we're eating snacks and we're chilling out and he's just he's so funny and he's so good at it that sometimes i'm just like you need to we need to get you on the show doing some some of these like guitar made up songs they're amazing yeah. 